Panda, panda, panda. It is time for the Panda Ability Upgrades updated video. If you haven't watched the series yet, I'm going through every faction, uh, breaking down uh, what is the value of the individual ability upgrades for each ability for each faction. This one is on the Panda. So those of you who haven't watched another video, I go a little more in depth onto the first character's ability um, and why I gave it the way I did. So you can kind of get in the mode for why I... I gave them the ability, uh, the the rankings that I did, and then later on I tend to go a little more quickly through it unless it requires a little more explanation. Basically, this considers the cost, benefits, and the contribution to the overall kit. So earlier on, the cost is lower, so it's easier to be a higher value. One to five scale, one's the worst, five's the highest. Um, the benefits, right? If up down here I get the same uh, percent uh, damage increase as I do up here, man, there's something wrong there. And so the benefit isn't as significant. That's considered in the contribution to the overall kit. Um, if there's something that, for example, gets the only zeros in this entire series, how much does it really do for what they're trying to do? Rework Lakes Passive. Um, let's go into it. So we're going to... Zoom, 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 zoom. I know there's some mighty kids out there. Don't, don't let me down. All right, we're going on Ember, and we're about to come up on her event. And after we come up on her event, we're going to be coming up on Renara, which we're going to want to use Ember for. So, uh, good person to go in depth on. A four value boosted under Lake Burning Comp. This is the uh, the battlegrounds team that you can run. Uh, with Lake where he's able to do a pretty solid AoE clear on teams that aren't too meta um, because he just cranks out a lot of damage when you have Ember and um, Amara putting out a bunch of burning on the enemies and then Lake following it up. So we like the A1 and A2 a lot. A3 kind of eventually and A4 not really at all. Not as bad as Lake's but it's really not that great. It gets a little more value in the Lake comp and I'll get into that. So 30% is actually pretty stinking high for the first level, but it doesn't scale very well. That's a term we'll use a lot. If the damages or the healings don't increase too much as you go up the levels, I, call it's, I will call it more flat. And if it scales, right, if it increases more significantly um, than, you know, 10% increased damage gain from between level two and level six, then I'm gonna say it's more of a scaling, uh, it's got good scaling damage. So uh, here we're getting the same thing uh, for a little, but it's so cheap and it is actually really, really good um, doing more damage. It kind of like Wonder Lewis, if you watch my uh, video, this is not a plus 60% increase. As you can see here, he did 110 or 140. Now he's doing 140 or 170. So this is only a 30% increase. Don't read it as anything else, but really this is pretty, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Pretty good, and she has a pretty uh, solid magic damage stat already. But we're not doing anything else other than doing more damage. So towards the end, uh, and, you know, it doesn't keep kind of like that five star value because it's more flat, and because there's no additional effects going on, a lot of basics have additional effects. Um, moving on to the end here, where we got the stun. So great damage. We like this. We like like pretty pretty good single target. Damage increases, but really until you're getting 100% chance to stun, you don't really have this move. It is good all the way, but you want to get that stun. Now here, 15% is pretty bad even for an AoE. AoE spe uh, damage increases tend to be a little smaller than their single target counterparts, which makes sense. Um, but this is pretty bad. Um, now that is a pretty solid jump, so we like that, right? Jumps up pretty significantly, and then we actually get to the point where we're applying more burning because we start off at 30 percent and then we have this weirdo little 30 percent chance to remove buffs from all energies i don't know what that spirit of Z i'm not even going to try and pronounce that because i'm so i'm not even going to be on record or i'm not going to be recorded botching that um but i don't know what's going on there but she has a chance to remove all buffs and that can be really significant and it's on a character by character basis too so you might only get rid of the you know all the buffs on one or two out of five characters but that is potentially really significant, particularly if it's on the tank. This you want to have maxed out if you were trying to kind of lowball the Renara event, because basically you're going to have to redo this thing over and over <laughs> until she manages to um, get rid of the invisibility on at least one character and get rid of the taunt, etc. on Salvador.
that's pretty much what you're going to be restarting until that happens. Here, I mean, it's flat, and it's so little damage recovery, and if Ember is the one taking a lot of damage, again, most of the time, there's not going to be more than, like, three or four burnings out there unless you're using her in the lake burning comp. And she very she's not going to be the first target in a lake burning comp, but because in that lake burning comp you usually don't have a healer, giving a little bit of sustain can potentially be the thing that lets her get her AOE off because she doesn't have it available until turn three. So that's why they get what they get. Let's move on to Miss Fow. Um, so foul again, not a little bit of like, oh, it's great. Eh, and then, but what happens on ability level six, man, what's going on there moving up and you'll see, I give a one, but I put summons here. We're going to talk about that and Panda, Panda, Panda. She gets a lot of additional benefits, but only if she's with Panda, Panda, Pandas. I don't even remember what that's from. I'm quoting that. And I don't remember what it's from. Uh, we talked about this before 30% for a basic is really not bad. Um, so we'll take it. Additional turn meter if um, the ability deals damage, like not like crits, just if it deals damage. She's gonna recover 20% of her turn meter. Mm, that's no joke. That's pretty stinking good. And if it lands an ability, uh, if it lands at a critical hit, she's gonna get a total of 40%. That's pretty good. Um, I don't have, but if I had her like maxed and uh, you know a usable gear level for a mat in the game, I would definitely be running her full crit chance uh, set. Probably, possibly a, a crit chance primary, either that or crit damage for sure. Um, because she is more about getting out her AOE and getting out her dodge. It's more of what her kit's about. But she can crank out some pretty good damage, particularly under the Soleus Lee, where she gets that additional boost from his leadership. Next, we got... Um, yeah, so A2, we have a little drop at ability level 5. What's going on there? Well, it's flat until you get to 5, you know, until you get to 6. And there's no additional benefits. So it starts out great. I mean, 35% is nothing to sneeze at, even though it is only three characters whenever you do the math on that still more than like 15 percent to all five right um so it is only going to be hitting a few people and that could be less convenient but it also could be more convenient because it's more focused damage uh, it depends on where you're at in the match and who you hit so this bit at the end the crit chance decrease crit hit sorry decreases the enemy turn meter by 20 percent again we have that double incentive to put that crit uh chance on her um, a lot of great synergy between those two moves, making it easy on us, making it clear what we should be putting on her. Gains dodge increase and applies to all allies for two turns. Um, you know, good, eh, you know, and then, oh, now we're really getting good when you get to the points where you're putting it, because at this point, if there's no summons, you're done. If you're put, if you're not going to run pandas with any, like, characters that summon out, you're done. You've got it to herself, you've given it to herself and all our allies for two turns, two, 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 two turns, Two turns on turn one. This doesn't do anything unless you are going to be using her on a team that uses summons. And I can't think of one you would want to do that in besides the really odd tournament. And even then, it's still probably like, gosh, only only a certain percent of the time is it even going to be worth it. And it's a really expensive upgrade on a character who's not particularly meta in any way. So moving on here again, it's flat. But we keep that flat increase and we get the additional damage increases for panda panda pandas so um they it is a little hard finding a spot for her. i'm trying to remember where i have her set up in my current let me let me look up briefly where i have her in my current um battleground situation oh duh so i have her being used on the panda defensive team just for the aoe damage um, so she is going to be running with almost all pandas. That's a lot more damage uh, for Little Miss Panda. But again, overall, just uh, is a little more niche right now. Pretty much Battlegrounds is where you can use her. Well, where you will be able to use her uh, too soon. Um, Hilda. Now, Hilda is someone else I would recommend using on that lake team. I'm going to do a full on like Battlegrounds teams I recommend later. Might wait till it actually comes out might just kind of jump the gun and give some predictions um, and do strategy later more. But uh, anyway, Hilda, I gave a tank a five on their basic. What is going on in that basic? And then her A2, really good value along the way. What what in the world is going on to where Carnifex is giving good like quality 
benefits to because her this is her because this is her taunt. This is her taunt right here, y'all. These two are just attacks. So what on earth is going on here? And then finally her A4, it looks like, you know, again, has that little jump at the end. Well, that's because she has a chance to increase her shield size. And that shield size is going to be dependent on the damage dealt. So that means increasing it, even though you haven't increased the amount of shield size she's getting, you're also, you're going from 110 to 170. So you're getting you know, a little over a 50% output in damage, which means 50% greater shield regeneration. Now you add more damage to that and you add another uh, two thirds of the shield being regenerated. That's really not bad. Now she is probably only be using us as of turn three. So there are, she's a battlegrounds character right now. There's not a lot of use for outside of that, but overall like the complementariness of that to her kit is great. Um, moving on here. Again, current effects to say, oh, armor increase and tenacity increase. If you've watched my elf video, you know those are my like top two things I want on tanks. I want them to not take as much damage, and I want them to you know have more tenacity, have a chance to resist stuff. She is because she has that buff. She is someone worth putting those tenacity runes on. Um, so it's mostly about these buffs, which is why um, uh, you don't see as much. But forty percent is pretty high, and she has above average damage for a tank. She is useful for finishing off the T15 of that tank challenge. Now, this is her actual taunt. Reducing that turn meter is not bad. Uh, it can it can make the difference in a fight where your your um words where like the speeds are really close. It's like hey, they aren't using Hilda and you are, and boom, now you get a little bit ahead, up to 20% ahead. That's not nothing. Um, she doesn't have, you know, great potency. You can see I, I have her basically maxed out. And since you want to use tenacity on her, um, potency, pretty miserable. <laughs> um, so she's not going to apply that super consistently, which is part of the consideration there. There is not a situation where you're going to use her with Snorri other than a tournament. Don't do this. You don't need this. Don't do it. You don't need it. It's a lot of extra shield. Uh, eventually you get 15,000. I mean, that's at least like a full special from a lot of characters. Uh, and she's going to be able to regen her shield. I, it's definitely not bad. But since it is pretty flat earlier on, we, we do not give a ton of as much value to the uh, level 4 and level 5. Okay. Kin Lee. Now, for those of you, again, who are preparing for Renara, this is the leadership you're going to want to use right here. It says Renara there, and that's why. It's literally four going up against Renara. You may only need it to ability level four, but I'll get into that. Fast tank. Why do I put fast tank next to ability level four? We'll find out. But uh, just as I gave some love for basic for a tank, I got to give some major hate because this is a pitiful. I mean, look, look over here, right? We're getting like 20, 30, 40. 15, 20, 30. It's just, it's, it's already lower. Um, no. No, Panda, Panda, Panda. Um, additional crit damage, great. Like, I'm going to be running crit chance on my Kinley. Oh, but it's a good, just like Skillion, right? Guaranteeing critical hit if the target is full health. How often is your tank going to be able to... No. Just no. It's not the worst thing in the world, but you have so many more important things to worry about than that. Uh, chance to apply the tenacity increase. This could almost be a good move. If this was something that was up on turn two and we had a little more, even like 70, 80% chance to apply this, I could actually totally get on board here. Or if it was like applied to himself and to others, I could get a lot more hot on this. But overall, again, he doesn't do that much damage. The chance is just too slim. It's not enough that I can get behind it. It's available too late. Um, no. Now here, obviously incredibly valuable. Really, really valuable. Still valuable. But after that, it's going to drop a little bit because, I mean, a debuff, an extra 5%, 10% health. How much is that going to help as much? And he has a passive, which is way better at giving him back health. What's that passive? What's that passive? So pretty flat. Uh, scaling, but it does synergize really well with what he's trying to do. 
um, gets a lot, a lot of health eventually at the start of every turn. Now, I haven't even boosted it all the way. It's only another 8% per turn. Why did I put fast tank? There are some circumstances where you don't necessarily want your tank to be very fast. I think this is one of the cases where you do, because if you can get him out more, that's more passive healing he's being able to do. So I think having decent speed secondaries, because he's more of like a dodge-oriented character versus an armor-mitigating damage character, um, and just kind of that in, in integrated sustainability, caring more about speed subs, I think, makes more sense on Kin Lee than most tanks. So what's going on here? Pain is getting more health. That's fine. That's all well and good. Ooh, but plus 3% of their health for each critical hit dealt and each buff applied. So dealing critical hits, right? Which when we have foul, that's good. Whenever a buff is applied, there's a lot of buffs flying around. We're going to get to Patriarch Chi in a bit. He's got an AOE buff. Foul's got an AOE buff. Um, obviously, Kinley is putting two buffs on himself whenever he tanks. Um, Hilda putting buffs on herself, both, both her taunt and her A2. There's a Shnikey sound of buffs flying, flying around, and Selena in, in, uh, in particular works really good on that Panda defensive team. More max health, okay. I mean, this is a you know that is a 60, you know, seven percent increase to the amount of healing that's going out through that. I didn't go there. I didn't need it. I also had a gear 11. Uh, I have, I think it was gear nine. Foul, um, Gear 9, uh, Master Duo, Gear 11, Chi, Lee, and um, Ember whenever I did the Renara event. And I did it fairly handily. Again, just needed to wait until Ember dispelled. Um, see who. Moving on to Lake. The only zeros I give in this entire series. What's going on? A lot of value late, not a ton early on, and we like the beginning of his leadership, but not the end as much. As you can see here, uh, it's pretty flat, um, but the tenacity decrease is not, you know, something to sneeze at. Particularly, uh, if this is he's going to be using this on his second turn, if he's going to be coming out of the gate faster than someone else, that for example, if you want to try and stun like a, a tank like Tromgar, uh, getting that tenacity decrease out there can be really significant. He's not going to have the craziest potency in the world because you're not going to want to run potency on him in the first place. You want him to hit hard, and that is really what he's about. But this I mean, eventually he gets a 280 percent uh, of magic damage, a chance to inflict tenacity decrease. That's really not bad for raid either. There's, there's some potential future uses we could have here if the pandas get a little more love with new characters, which they ain't not gotten, because Rin sucked. Um, moving on here, again, not value early on, but later on, what is this refreshing stream? This is, this is literally all Lake is. <laughs> um, this, how this works, right? 200 damage, you may say, that doesn't sound like too much. Doesn't sound like much Karn effects. What's going on? Removes all burning stacks from them. Deals eventually up to an additional 50% magic damage for each burning stack removed from that enemy. Now this isn't written completely right. If there are if there is one burning damage on each enemy, you know, total of five, it's gonna do an extra 250% magic damage to all enemies. That's what it means. No, it's not written precisely that way. It's a little off on the description there, but that is actually how it works. This can put out crazy, crazy, crazy damage if you line it up right. 50% chance to inflict potency decrease for two turns. Whatever, they ain't gonna live. But as you see at the beginning, I mean, eh, mediocre AOE damage increases because, again, the base is not very high on this, but eventually we get that additional 20 on each of those and those are necessary for him to be used in the way that he can be used which is essentially battlegrounds it recovers 10 percent health getting some health recovery he's gonna be using this on turn one if you're able to get there i mean if you're able to do this then i guess he's still gonna get it in time for his second turn because he's not gonna have his, uh, his aoe until his third turn anyway Problem is you really need to run him faster than Ember to get because this damage decrease going increase sorry going on Ember is going to crank up her stun and AOE. But if you have Ember slower than Lake, she's not going to get out her burning 
until after his A2 comes up, and you want to be able to boom, boom that right away because his team is not built around sustain. It's about built up around winding up that punch and hitting them and hoping pretty much everyone's gone. Um, so you really want to have this up on turn one. You want to use it on turn one because your ember is going to be hopefully faster than your lake, and so it will be usable for her second and third turn as well as his second or third turn. By the time you have it lasting here, if you don't have it all the way here, he's not going to have damage increase on himself for that AOE and you want it up. You really got to get there, but you do get good value from getting it here. At least you at least get something pretty good. Right. Go into the passive. What did I just say? Who do you want faster? Who do you want faster? Do you want Lake faster? Do you want Ember faster? Now, it is definitely possible for you to do the math and figure out, like, hey, okay, well, how fast do I need to Maybe I'll just run Ember with speed runes and run a Lake without the fastest damage set. And that means, like, yeah, but you want Ember to do freaking damage, too. So now you kind of, like, lose a bit of the damage value if you're going to boost this. And, yeah, they'll get it out a little sooner. And that could potentially be a difference maker. It's just overall, I, I think what we need to see here is that there needs to be some additional synergy with Ember here because that is clearly there, there, that burning synergy is supposed to come into play here. We need a little love to go to Ember as a part of fixing this passive because without it, you almost have to like hamper Ember in order to get them to work as intended as a tandem. Um... And that that's not a good that's not a good look. Um, so good value early on. Why is that? Because we're getting great penetration for the cost, and then uh, basically no one has counterattack, so that's pretty negligible, and it stays at two hundred the rest of the way. Going to master duo, the raid master, the raid master, the master of the raid. It's a Shrek reference for you kids out there. All right. Again, really solid, like a 30%. I know, I feel like I've been saying it these past couple of videos so much, but 30% on a basic is really not bad for the first um, first measure. And we're getting a first upgrade, and it has a chance of increasing slow. There still are not many characters able to apply slow, and all of them are huge for the raid. Like, on, on the solo teams that you see for the most part, um, even if not on the solo teams, then, like, the teams they do crud tons of damage. Slow is so huge. So get some. Uh, making the slow last two turns, also massive. And then finally, if they're afflicted by slow, turn is reduced by 30%. Y'all see that there? Fives across the board. Now, why don't we like the fourth level of this? Because it's only just giving us the 5% turn meter. I mean, turn meter is not bad. Again, particularly against someone like Aerotar, we can't reduce the turn meter. Boosting your own turn meter is kind of a way to get a little around that. Um, Armor increase, giving it to up to three allies by the time you get it, uh, Master Duo and three allies, so you're not going to give it to everyone, but eventually you'll be able to use this on turn one, so he's a nice little energy, or sorry, a little uh, en battery, there we go, he's a nice little battery for the team, he can use this on his first turn, he's going to be able to give 30% before um shadar is going to be able to give it to anyone there really is some potential on the panda team they just need someone whether it's a leader or something just to turn around the viability of this faction maybe another panda with some burning synergy going on because cranking this out and getting your pandas out in front could be really i mean that could totally change the outcome of a battle but also in raids going to help people cycle through stuff more quickly particularly if you're using them on auto because you're usually not going to use this unless you are on auto so it increases his auto viability, gains an additional stack of regen. That's fine. Armor increase. That's fine. It's, it's kind of to synergize with his um, his his A4, where basically he's the last one left. It helps him out. Eh. Going over here, giving himself the counterattack chance. Uh, this can be useful. Like if you know that the, the AOE is about to come up um, against. Uh, one of the uh, bosses, you can use this to kind of reapply slow out the gate and not be as worried about it. You won't be able to risk any turn here because obviously they just had their turn. Um, but, you know, in other circumstances, if enemies aren't invisible, then he's going to be able to counterattack um, for, uh, for, and, and hit them and again apply that slow. And now maybe a few of them have slow out there and it's messing up their, um, their turn orders and you're not getting stuff out in the right time. Uh, giving himself more crit chance and crit damage. It's all like what he's trying to do is just 
it doesn't really make a difference most of the time because he's more about that turn meter manipulation. Master Duo is immune to bind this. Who cares? It really doesn't matter. They're not going to beat goblins. You're not going to be fighting Yogi. This is so bad. Increased damage reduction if he's the only person left. You know how you fix that? You just don't kill Master Duo last. It's a pretty bad passive. It's not as bad as Lakes, but it's a pretty bad, pretty bad passive. Getting to our final three, Patriarch, Chi, Shaolin, and Rin. Patriarch Chi, 80% chance starting off, gets to eventually 220%. Um, we give him some boost for increasing the shield size and chance to apply the shield. It's 50% chance to apply shield up to 50% of damage dealt. Um, we like that you know, a lot of shield regen going on with the Panda faction. Then we have the shield. I mean, this is a huge single target heal. It's one of the best single target, if you will, heals the entire game. Also removes two buffs, debuffs from an ally. You can use this on a character um, in some circumstances where someone might have applied an ability block or maybe like debuff immunity or something. And you can remove that so that your person can do what you wanted them to do in their first turn. Eventually, he's going to be able to put this out on turn one as well. Usually, I've found um, in my times where I want to run him on auto, I currently don't want him to have that go out in the first turn. However, I will be giving him this when it comes time for Battlegrounds. So I want that armor increase to go out on the first turn um, because of all the AoEs that can come up, all the things that can come in between him being able to do that, and because the tank has probably taken a bit more damage at that point, or if they manage to circumvent it, one of my non-tanks that I want to keep up. Uh, this passive is really synergized with what he's trying to do is just it's just not big numbers this is not big numbers and that's why we don't give it a ton a ton of love i mean going going from it's just not a lot now the lead is i mean this was one of the o, this was like the og tower lead for the longest time and he is also still useful in raid for people who haven't managed to like, get like their yogi all maxed out and everything um, he can definitely help you get to a point where you're all but, if not completely soloing, um, hard work in particular. And then going on to Rin. Now this is our red, uh, the most recently released panda, and still the worst panda. Uh, we get a little bit of love early on in A3 and not and later on in A2. What is going on there? Uh, really crappy damage. You wonder if you consider this is multiplied times three because it's going out to three people. Again, we have freaking Master Duo starting out at 30, and we have her ending at 30. Uh, damage to all enemies. So, again, even for AoEs, this is pretty bad. Instant cooldown if the enemy kills ability kills an enemy. But, you know, it does 150% damage. That's just so little. I mean, that... The odds you're going to be able to kill so you have to set that up so completely and even then all you get to do is use this really low damage ability again not good um uh counter attack uh this is what you're gonna you're definitely going to use this on turn one to give her just any chance of doing real damage and because she's going to bring herself back up pretty quickly for her second turn um again a lot of like i would give more love there if this was overall a better kit. Um, but against demons, this is literally counterproductive. So it literally hurts her against the dominant meta. And then panda, 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 use her with panda. She gets more love. You aren't going to use her because she's really bad. Shaolin, the final panda, panda, panda. Shaolin starts off getting some decent love from his A1. Now, this is like the biggest note that I gave on any of the characters when I did this. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with this. Okay. Too many notes to fit on one line. Currently, Shaolin is very useful as a multi-attacker. Removes skills on Aerochar since both his A2 and A3 are multi-attacks. And a little add in there. And because you can't remove his turn meter, so you can't manipulate him in the ways that you can the other bosses. However, using these attack skills... Uh, against scales significantly reduces the damage output and therefore the value of improving his damage is also reduced through these ability upgrades shaolin's ratings are based on a specific application shaolin's a3 is one of the biggest single targeting uh, single target attacks in the game assuming you have one enemy if you were to use him outside the raid however if you can 
compare it to the output of a great OE, AOE like Freezard's A3, it pales in comparison in situations where he has a tournament requirement. The value of improving A2 and A3 is increased, but not enough to warrant early investment. Overkill, what's going on there? Raid Raid. Basic, again, starts out doing decent damage. Being able to heal himself passively... It's fine, but you are going to be using these passives whenever you can. Um, Reasonable-ish damage scaling. It eventually does, uh, you know, essentially 420, right? Um, and then here, 7 attacks of 100. That's 700%. But if you're using this against those scales because of how much they reduce your damage output, you're really only getting a fraction of the benefit here of these increases. Overkill, again, his at, at level one, you have addressed the base dodge chance, unless you were facing off against someone who uh, has a dodge buff, there is no value for any of this. And look at that, you could eventually get this to 40%. I mean, literally the only characters you're gonna run into with that kind of dodge are like Salvador if Hera's given him her A3. That's it. So not much value there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We got one more. We got demons. Then we're done. Hope you're having a good one. See you next time.